Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regions. But no worries, this is a Common Core Cram session, so it can be used for an Algebra 2 course anywhere in the United States. Shout out to Cali, Florida, and Texas, yay! <laughs> as well as any um, Algebra 2 course throughout the world. Shout out to Jamaica and Canada. All right, let oh, and India as well. Okay, so this is functions. Question two, domain of a function. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master, All right? And if I could stick every single Algebra 2 student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I definitely would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy dose by ordering and purchasing the complete Algebra 2 cram series or even just the function series. You have lots of friends, classmates, pairs, or even colleagues who may be taking Algebra 2 with you. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the complete cram session. Question two, domain of a function. What is the domain of the function 3x squared divided by x squared minus 41? Is it going to be A? Okay, this is a great section um, of algebra. Uh, this is what it's, it's called set notation, or what I like to call set builder notation. A set is usually a group of things, and within the context of algebra 2, that would, it's usually going to be a group of numbers. So I'm going to tell you how each um, symbol, right, or alpha is read. Okay, so the first thing you see is this um, beginner curly brace. So the curly brace is read the set of all, no, the set of actually, and then this is the variable that we're describing, and it's going to be the set of all x, because of course, if you had purchased or watched my um, function basic series, you would have known that um, the domain of a function is defined as all the x values where the graph of the function exists. And if the domain is not mentioned or given, it's assumed to be the largest set of real numbers for which the output of the function, when I say output, I mean the result of plugging an x value like 0, 1, or 2 in here and then getting an answer or just simply uh, the dependent variable or y values, okay? So again, the largest set of real numbers for which the output of the function is defined in real. And in case you forgot what real numbers are, they include integers. Integers are the counting numbers on a number line such as 0, 1, 2, negative 5, 4, negative 351, you name it, any vertical hash along the horizontal number line, the x-axis. The real numbers also include rational numbers, numbers that can be expressed as uh, fractions, and when you convert them into decimals, they terminate, the decimals don't repeat. And real numbers also include irrational numbers, numbers that when um, cannot be expressed as simple fractions, because when you try to evaluate them, uh, they have decimals that continue on and on forever, okay? Such, and you know, they never repeat and they never terminate. Examples of irrational numbers are going to be the square root of 2. All right, when you evaluate the square root of 2, it never terminates. Also, pi, uh, the number many people shorten as 3.14, but it's actually a decimal that repeats forever. And what else? Oh, even Euler's number, the natural number, it has a decimal, decimal um, that repeats on and on and on and does not terminate. At least it doesn't terminate to human knowledge. All right, so that was a long aside. Let's continue. So here again, you have your curly brace. It's read the set of your variable all x and this, um, a vertical bar, which can also be replaced by a colon, is read such that, and then these are going to be um, 
a description of the type of number. So x, th this is the element of symbol, kind of looks like a Greek epsilon. It can be read such that x is an element of or is a member of, and then this is the number type, real numbers. And then the comma is read such that it's read the same way this bar is. And what follows the comma is a condition. All right, the condition is x is not equivalent to 7. All right, so that's how this is read. And you'll get more practice by seeing the rest of the answer choices. Or is it going to be uh, b, the set of all x's such that x is an element or is a member of real numbers such that x is not equivalent to positive or negative 7? Is it going to be c? the set of all x's such that x is an element or is a member of real numbers, or is it answer choice D? x such that x is a member of real numbers such that x is not equivalent to zero. Definitely press pause if you need to. This is actually a really simple problem, but yeah, take your time to think for a few brief moments and press pause. All right, so whenever you're going to determine the domain, um, there are three criterion that you have to come keep in mind, okay? And criterion A is that if you're dealing with denominators, that is if you have a fraction, the denominator must not be equivalent to zero because division by zero is undefined. Then we have criterion B. You know, these criterion are in no particular order. Radicands, and when I say radicands, I mean the number under the square root symbol are also called a radical bar. So radicands with an even index, here the index is two, but usually it's redundant in algebra to represent the two. It's usually not represented. Or e other even indices could be four, six, okay? Um, so radicands with even indices um, must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that means the x, this zero greater than or equal to actually refers to the x. So I don't, I'm, I don't think this is expressed as precisely as possible, but I think you get the point. Um, they must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, the radicand, because you have to remember that even roots of negative numbers, that is numbers less than zero are imaginary. And at this point in Algebra 2, we're not ready to step into the world of imaginary um, radicand evaluation just yet. We'll get to that maybe in another math course. And then um, criterion C is that the argument of logarithms. And when I say argument, I mean the the place that the x is holding, which is actually called a power. A power is not the exponent, it's the result of the exponent or the result, okay? So the x or the argument must be greater than zero because the log of zero is undefined. And again, the logarithm of a negative number is going to be imaginary. We're not at the point in Algebra 2 for this topic to step into the realm of imaginary numbers just yet. Okay, that comes, but not right now. All right, so the argument or the x, the power, the result, must be greater than or equal to zero to avoid um, the imaginary numbers or indefinition, okay? Alrighty then, and in this particular problem, the only criterion that's going to matter is the first one. So we're going to go ahead and evaluate the denominator here based on this criterion, okay? So x squared minus 49 is not equivalent to zero. I think I wrote this backwards here, my bad. Um, 
so we you can treat the not equal sign just like a regular equal sign so we're going to add 49 on both sides of the not equal sign and we get that x squared is not equal to 49 and then in order to figure out what the x values of interest are we have to take the square root of both sides x is equivalent to 7 but remember whenever you're taking the square root of an even exponent you always have to consider the negative root as well because squaring a negative root will give you um, the power that results from this will give you the second power as well okay all right yeah so the correct answer choice obviously is going to be b because remember I said the domain is the largest set of real numbers and in our case the only caveat or restriction or criterion is that the denominator cannot be equivalent to zero and that's where our condition comes in here for our set notation so if you want to do a graphical check you can um, input this into your graphing calculator so we're going to go ahead and input the function into our graphing calculator. So we open up our y equals equation editor and we input the function. 3x squared, our numerator, our um, fraction bar, which is found through division, and we input the denominator. x squared, you know our x squared feature over here, minus 49. Then we're going to go ahead and graph this okay and remember when using your gra graphing calculator you have to play around with the different zoom seven i mean i said zoom seven maybe because i use that setting a lot you have to probably play around with the zoom and the window to make sure you're getting a really cool picture zoom fit which is zoom and the number zero is usually a good one but it may or may not be you have to play around with this and this is what you get something that looks like this and you can see that where x is equivalent to approximately 7 and negative 7 and 7 there's a vertical asymptote meaning the function is empty there or it's undefined okay all right so thanks for tuning in good luck studying